Hey, my name is Ben and this is the Honeydew Homestead. Before we get started, I just wanted to give you a little bit of context into what you're about to see. Some of these videos, especially the very early videos, are going to be a little rough. It's going to be mostly just the camera got put down and I hit record and I got to work. The biggest reason for that is I didn't have a lot of time. I was feeling very rushed. I had a lot to do. We were moving out of our old home into this home and I just had way too much stuff going on. But I knew that I wanted to record it and at least preserve that content just so that I could uh, s splice something together and uh, put it up on YouTube for you guys. If you do have questions about some of those videos or, or this video in particular, leave a comment down below and I'll do my very best to answer those. With that said, I do hope you like this video. I do hope you subscribe and I do hope you enjoy this journey. Uh, as we turn this new house into a home and maybe even a homestead. Let's get to it. Hey, what's up guys? Uh, I hope you can hear me. I don't have a mic. We still have that whole scary thing going on throughout the United States and, uh, and people are kind of locked down in their homes and uh, I decided to start a few projects. Actually, there's a lot of projects to do, and that's kind of why this channel is called The Honeydew Homestead. Uh, I just moved into this house. Uh, we actually just built this house, uh, but there's a lot to do. You'd be surprised how much has to get done in a brand new home to really make it feel like home. Outside of the outside of the usual stuff that you have to do inside the house, hanging pictures, moving furniture, um, hanging curtains, that kind of stuff. There's a lot of things that have to get done outside of the house as well, and uh, there's a lot to do. And it's not just grass. I have I got a fence to build, and that's what I have right here. Uh, we've got some 4x4 four by, four by 10 posts we're going to be sticking in the ground and um, I guess maybe I'll take you over to uh, where the work has to get done. So this is going to be the first step in uh, building that fence. we got to set these up. I think they're called baffles. I don't know. Uh, we're going to set these up so that we can run a string from this point clear over to the other side behind you uh, and set up a, a straight line. Now, I won't go into too much detail here because I think I think there's plenty of videos on how to uh, build a fence. Uh, but you can hear why I'm building the fence. Uh, I live off of a very busy road. And I hope this fence does help, even just a little bit. Uh, so let's get started. So the first thing I really did here was I drew out a line and I used some uh, masonry line that I connected uh, to the two end points, actually just beyond the two end points of, of where I wanted to extend my fence. Uh, and it's important that you create, uh, I, believe, I think, I want to say it's called a baffle. Mm -hmm. And what that lets you do is um, once you run or you stake one on one side and stake one on the other side, you can run a string between those two and it gives you some room to adjust the string just in case. Because, for example, the piece of fence that we're about to do is 150, 160 feet. <laughs> or more maybe it was 180 it was a lot and we wanted to have that fence be as straight as possible and so the best way to do that is to run a masonry line but you also want to have a little bit of wiggle room so that you can kind of slide it left and right and you can slide the other side left and right and that'll give you um, a little bit of uh, space to to really dial that in exactly where you want that fence line to be 
after that was done, it was getting down to uh, painting little X marks uh, exactly where each one of the posts needed to be. One important note about that, I spaced mine, most of the posts are roughly about um, eight feet apart, except they're not. One very important thing to remember is that when you are putting these posts down, do not space them exactly eight feet apart. You will not get it right. Always wear hearing protection. You want to space them just shy of that. Think seven and a half feet roughly. Give yourself about six inches or so of wiggle room. It's a lot easier to cut four or five inches off of a board than it is to go try to find a, a nine foot board. Uh, in some options you just don't have, for example, if you were laying pickets down the way that I plan to lay my pickets, there's no such thing as a nine foot picket. So it's very, very important uh, that you make it just a little bit short. Okay, so after painting those those marks, it was getting to the getting to probably the hardest part of building a fence. This is the part where most people give up. Um, drawing the the string line and um, painting little X's and making all the plans. Oh, that's the fun stuff. That's the really fun stuff. The not fun stuff is actually digging the holes. I live in eastern North Carolina. It is some hard clay here and there is no topsoil, especially on this particular property because we've had so much uh, erosion problems that there really is nothing but subsoil here. And so it is just rock hard. And if you're not hitting rock hard clay, you're hitting rocks. So my solution to that problem was an auger it saved this project and it was worth every single penny i the one i bought was from harbor freight but they're all about in that price point a little more a little less if you if you're into brand names but i bought the the harbor freight one and it has it has more than made its money back in just time and medical <laughs> medical bills of saving my back so um, absolutely worth the money. So maybe actually I'm going to show you just a little bit of, of real-time footage, not sped up, but just real-time footage of just how difficult it is to sit there, even with an auger, to sit there and dig through this Carolina clay.